We just want to welcome you. So is there a newcomer, a first timer? Okay, all right, the three of you are first. You've never been to Bread Beckers or you've never been to a class? All right, well, we are so glad you're here. And uh, We are not Lucy and Ethel. Eve, this is Sue yes. Becker. Sue, I'm Ashley McCord. I'm her oldest daughter. Yep. Oldest child, oldest daughter, best, all the things, favorite, <laughs> most wonderful. The only reason she continued to have children, because I was so amazing right from the get-go. Wow. Okay, we're going to start this class now. So, you ready? Yes, I okay, am. Okay, we want to welcome you to the Olivelli Turn Up the Heat class. We're so excited. When um, Olivelli is our new line of infused oils and vinegars, and Ashley's going to tell you about a little more about that, introduce you to them. But we love their recipes and everything about Olivelli. So we're excited about this class. Everything is a little spicy, got a little heat. Not everything is uh, blazing hot. But anyway, and so we're just excited to be here. I always pray before the class and ask the Lord to give me a word of encouragement for each of you. And I've prayed for you this morning that your households will be blessed. And I just thought of this. Rain is supposed to come in tomorrow. You know, and sometimes we go, oh, man, it rains on the weekend or whatever. But I just love this. It says um, in Isaiah 55, 10, For as the rain and snow come down from the heavens and return not there again, but water the earth and make it spring forth and sprout, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Brad and I had the wonderful privilege a few years ago of going to Ireland where it rains every day. At some point, the, the motto there is if you don't like the weather in Ireland, wait 15 minutes, it will change. And um, that's about true. But one of the things that our guide said to us was, you see how green it is? I've never seen such a green place. I know why their color is green. The pastures are green. Mm -hmm. Everything's green. And she said, you get to enjoy the green because of the rain. It rains every day, and that makes everything green. And I always think of that when I read this verse. But God's word is just like that. So whatever God's word has spoken to you today, remember, it will not return void, and it will accomplish what he sent it to do. So... Be blessed today. Let's pray. We're going to thank God for, the, for our life today, the time we have together, and for the food. Thank you, Father God, for this day. Thank you for your abundant provision of delicious food, your herbs, your spices, the foods you've given us. Help us to learn to enjoy them again and come back to your way of eating, living, and being and doing so that everything we say and do can bring glory to your name. Thank you for this time, your blessing on this event, and everything that happens here today. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. I'm going to turn it over to Ashley. Let her give you a little uh, introduction to Olivelli. And then we're going to make the dressing and your beverage for this morning. Awesome. So Olivelli is uh, an infused oil and vinegar company uh, located in Bozeman, Montana. It is owned by a mother and daughter. So we, we absolutely love that feature about their company. Um, they have all natural infused extra virgin olive oils. Uh, years ago, they set out to find single family olive farms where they could contract so that that farm was only growing olives and pressing olive oil for them. Um, they get them from all over the world, Greece, Italy, Spain, Morocco, um, and then I think I thought there was one more. Um, but they bring the olive oil into their facility in Bozeman, Montana, and then they infuse those olive oils with all natural spices, flavoring, dehydrated herbs, vegetables. So all of their oils are completely vegan, including their peppered bacon. They do not put a slab of bacon down in the <laughs> olive oil vat to make their peppered bacon olive oil. It is infused with the spices and peppers that your brain associates with peppered bacon, and that's how they get that flavor. Um, then they also have an entire line of completely um, unpasteurized, which is really important, unpasteurized balsamic vinegars. Um, for instance, this is their vine-ripened raspberry. If you let it sit long enough, a lot of times you can see little black specks on the bottom. That's the seeds from the raspberries that settle at the bottom because this they use dehydrated raspberries to infuse their balsamic vinegars. 
Same with the blueberry balsamic vinegar. And then they also have savory vinegars as well as more fruity, sweeter vinegars. They also have different, uh, not textures, what's the look, we're thick, thick and thin. That's the word I'm looking for, mm -hmm. um, of vinegars. This one is a very thick balsamic vinegar. The, how they get the thickness in a balsamic vinegar depends on the percentage of grape must that they add to the wine. So you press the grapes, you have the juice, you turn that into wine. Well, then you cook down that mashed grape. And depending on how much of it you add to the wine to turn it into vinegar, is gonna give you a thicker, sweeter vinegar. So a runnier vinegar is gonna have a lesser percentage of grape must. So your thick balsamic vinegars typically have about 80% grape must added to them, whereas your thinner ones have somewhere between 35 and 55% grape must. So we have lots of different flavors out there. Definitely visit the tasting table after the class. We will mix and match flavors. So like we're gonna do a salad dressing for you this morning, which is one of our favorites. But if you wanna see, okay, what is this vinegar and this oil going to taste like together? We can add those two in a little tasting cup for you, stir it up and you can taste it before you decide which ones you want to purchase. So then that comes to purchasing. There are four different bottle sizes. 100 milliliter, 250 milliliters, 500 milliliters, and then a 750 milliliter size. All the oils and vinegars are sold by the 100 milliliter. The price is on the cask. Um, it is a on tap system. So the first time that oil or that vinegar is going to see the light of day is when it goes into your bottle. So it is super, super fresh. You wanna store these out of direct sunlight and not right next to your stove. You don't want it getting hot. That's what can then degrade your oil. Um, but olive oil and the vinegars have a super long shelf life if kept in the, in the correct conditions. Um, all, the, all of the vinegar is unpasteurized. So sometimes you may see something kind of floating around in there. Do not be alarmed. Um, just like with kefir or kombucha, you've got that scoby, you've got that mother that's there that's making all of that good bacteria that our gut needs, and that's, it's all there. So um, these are just, it's a great line. So I said everything is on tap, everything is sold by the 100 milliliter. So you pick out your bottle. All four size bottles are the same price. There's a $3 bottle fee, and then you pay by the 100 milliliter. But when that bottle is empty, you bring it back to us clean and dry, and you can exchange it, $3 for $3, for whatever size bottle you want. So if you wanna start off trying out the smaller sizes and make sure that that's what you like, bring that bottle back clean and dry, and you can upgrade to a bigger bottle, and you're just exchanging those bottles, all right? Any questions about the oil and the vinegar before we get started? Everybody good? And one, okay. one other thing, the sweetness of the vinegar also depends on how much grape must is mm -hmm. there. So there's no sugar added. Some of these vinegars yep, are point. very sweet. And um, you think, oh, this got a lot of sugar in it. No, it's, it's the way it's made with that um, amount of grape must. So um, those also of you that use apple cider vinegar medicinally, if you know what I'm talking about, these are so much better tasting. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the tang tangerine tastes how many of y'all remember uh, Orange Julius places in the mall? Tangy tangerine. Just take a swig and you'll go, oh man, it's I so, think I remember that. It's so good. It's really delicious. So we're going to start by making the dressing. It's not, we did not type up this recipe. We actually kept tossing around what dressing we wanted to make on the salad. We had originally planned to do the chickpea kale salad, but because of the heat of the three dishes that we are serving, we decided, you know what, let's back it off. Let's just do a cooling, nice, refreshing little salad to, to cool your mouth. So we tossed around several. We originally had thought caramelized onion, uh, I mean caramelized garlic oil with the roasted garlic balsamic. But then I wanted to throw some raspberries in there. So we thought we're gonna do the Sicilian lemon and the raspberry oil. And what's I really mean the raspberry vinegar. vinegar, sorry. And what's really great is Olivelli has these little shaker salad dressing bottles and they give you, not only do they give you flavor combination suggestions, 
but they give you lines. Fill your vinegar to here, fill your oil to here, add this much salt, and you're good to go. Um, while mom does our uh, Sicilian lemon and vine ripened raspberry vinegar, which is one of the recipes on the yep, bottle. It's right here. While she mixes that, I do want to also mention um, that not only does Olivelli have these infused oils and vinegars, but they have a complete line of infused salts, rubs, spices, herb mixes. So they have so many other items as well. In fact, let me draw your attention to the little recipe booklet. Um, if you want to go ahead and turn to the Moscow Mule recipe, because we're going to make that in just a second, you'll notice, and page, you can- what page? Uh, on page 10 is the pineapple habanero Moscow Mule. We are doing this uh, non-alcoholic for you today. Um, but you'll notice in the recipe that the pineapple habanero vinegar is in bold. Anytime their recipe is recommending one of their products, it will be in bold so that it goes ahead and grabs your attention. So if you need to thumb through the recipes and go, okay, these are the Olivelli products that I need. It's easy to find them. Um, I don't think they have any in this booklet, but sometimes they, um, they will give you options on flavors. Like they may recommend one of two different flavors and the, both of those options will be listed there in parentheses. Um, wanna mention something. So this class, we have this fantastic little recipe booklet, but we also have an entire wall of recipe cards. So you are welcome to take any of those recipe cards. And then when you purchase, and then additionally, if you purchase a particular flavor of oil or vinegar, or even salt or rub that has a recipe card for that flavor, definitely grab it. Uh, we can hole punch it, put it on a key ring for you to keep it handy. Um, so those are just some great, um, they've got tons and tons of recipe ideas, so. So for this recipe, just so you know, I just followed what was here on the bottle. And this one, the, the berry recipe actually uses um, more vinegar than oil. Most of the time it's, it's the opposite. And then the vanilla bean infused salt. Um, I have another daughter that eats this, just eats it. She loves it. So anyway. It is delicious sprinkled on a scoop of vanilla ice cream and to give you that salty. Oh, it's delicious. And again, since you're, most of you are customers of ours, you know that we're all into unrefined salt. All of their salts are unrefined as yep. well. That was our big question. When Ashley brought the Olivelli line to our attention, we were like, wait a minute, is the olive oil good? Is the salt good? So it is all good. So it we wouldn't. Absolutely yeah. delicious. So I'm just going to shake this up and let them uh, toss your salad. And then, so we are going to go to um, page 10, and Mom is going to mix up our Moscow mule. Okay. Um, we will talk about kefir if you don't know what kefir is. How many of you drink the juice kefir and, and have heard me talk about it? Most of you. We'll talk about that more at the end to tell you how to make it. We sell a starter. All you have to do is add it to a jug of juice and tomorrow morning it will be kefir. And then this is your starter now and you just keep using this to start your next bottle, your next bottle of forever and ever. So this recipe, as you see, calls for vodka. Well, we want y'all to drive home safely and we're not a bar here at Bread Becker's. So I'm always looking, how can we make this non-alcoholic? So all I did here was I substituted the kefir juice for the vodka. I, I substituted the kefir juice for the ginger beer, but I'm gonna grate some fresh ginger to make that ginger beer. You can use ginger beer is not alcoholic, so that's not why I was avoiding it. I was avoiding it, number one, I wanna make this, ju this drink uh, a probiotic drink, but also the ginger beer does have um, sugar in it, added sugar. So I, I try to avoid that as well. So does that make sense to you? So for the four ounces of ginger beer, I'm using fresh grated ginger and four ounces of kefir. For the two ounces of vodka, I'm using two ounces of kefir juice, okay? Now, I made it two ways. I first substituted the vodka with extra pineapple juice. We all loved it, but it tasted like pineapple juice and I didn't want that to be the dominating so once I went back and made it with the kefir juice substituted for the vodka everybody was like okay yeah that's that's the better flavor that we want so I'm gonna mix that up real quick for you here 
I'm going to mix like six recipes at a time, I hope. So, <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, if you want to mm -hmm. go ahead and measure that, it's, uh, we're going to use 12 ounces of pineapple juice. So if you did want to make a whole pitcher of this, it's a little hard to measure the, uh, the keeper juice. But while we're, while we're letting that settle down a minute so I can finish measuring it, this is fresh ginger. If you've never used fresh ginger, it is amazing. How much do you need of this? Um, 36 ounces okay. total. Here, yeah, you can. You're good. All right. So I'm just going to cut that end off. And um, because this is a drink, and I really don't want this, this uh, skin in there, sometimes I don't care if it's for me at home. I just go ahead and um, just grate the skin and everything. But when you're buying ginger, snap off a piece and smell and see how fresh it is and that's what you buy but I take our grapefruit spoons that we sell anybody know about grapefruit spoons they're amazing and I just take it and I kind of just scratch that that peel back it's real papery thin and like I said you can grate it right in there um, it's not really that big a deal it's not like it's bark you know that's going to be real tough but when I'm making a, a pretty drink all right, so you said 36 of the kefir juice and 12 of the pineapple? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what makes this drink so special is we're going to add six ounces of the pineapple habanero vinegar. Do you have anything you want to say about that one? <laughs> it is, if you like sweet heat, the pineapple habanero vinegar is absolutely delicious. So, so good. Do you need a little, um, there's a little. Uh, I can do six ounces oh, of okay. this. And I, ginger to your taste. I like ginger. So the ginger's got a little heat too. So even without the pineapple habanero, this is, this has got a little kick. And I'm sure you've heard of my favorite kefir drink which I'll probably have tonight when I go home after I've been talking all day, my throat's dry and scratchy and I don't do carbonated beverages. This is naturally carbonated. So I fill my glass with ice, grate some fresh ginger, a little splash of almond extract, which kind of has a cherry flavor, and a little splash of vanilla extract and then cover, pour my kefir juice over it. Tastes like the best cherry vanilla ginger ale you've ever had, but it's a probiotic drink. So now okay. we're gonna add that. And then we're going to add the juice of our limes. There you Thank go. You. One thing I want to mention while mom is cutting um, the limes and juicing those, on every single bottle of oil or vinegar, you're going to have a tag that tells you what that oil and vinegar is. You can flip it open, and they give suggestions for use. They give suggestions for pairing. Um, so, for instance, the pineapple habanero said when creating dressings and marinades or dipping with bread, combine with these oils, the hatch chili oil, which we're gonna use today, or the Tahitian lime olive oil, the blood orange olive oil, or even the Veracruz chili um, olive oil. And then they give recipe suggestions, delicious for marinating or glazing chicken, seafood, or pork, um, adding into cocktails, or dressing salsas for fish tacos or por pulled pork sandwiches. So. They give you great suggestions for how to use it right there on the tag. And then the recipe cards that we mentioned out there for some of the other flavors, they also give you a recipe on the one side, flip it over, and they give you other recipe suggestions or um, things to part, uh, the oils to marry with or um, combine with. So it's just lots of great information that they give you to make your little decorative drink. Now, you would use a nicer cup than this, but we thought you would like our little garnish here. And uh, one hint about juicing limes, lemons, oranges, best is room temperature, okay? So I'm just gonna believe that's the right flavor because I measured it all the other day, and there you go, all right? So we'll serve that with your meal. This is a white grape peach, which I love. It, it's a little sweeter than just the white grape, but if you want uh, either the white grape or white grape peach. 
I wanted a lighter color um, kefir here instead of an mm -hmm. apple juice would probably get be well, you know, work well too. But I really love the grape juices, yeah. and uh, I like the lighter white grape and the white grape peach. Yes. yes. So for our, our folks watching oh, online after the fact, uh, help us remember to repeat your question because the camera cannot hear, the oh, microphones can't hear you. Now. So therefore, it sounds like we're answering some random, don't even know what the question was. So um, our customer in the store asked what kind of juice we use oh. for this particular kefir, and it is a white grape peach. Um, I find that in the summer months, um, or like apple cider, I have kefir juiced apple cider, like fresh from the orchard, and it kefirs so fast, so fast. And I find that sometimes different types of juices, juice blends uh, will, will uh, kefir faster, so you just wanna keep an eye out for that. And especially now that we're getting into the summer months when it's warmer, it tends to culture so faster, mm -hmm. so yes. All right, so we are all done with this. Yes. Um, for the juice, how much per? When you oh, when you kefir it? How much? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so the question is about the sugar amount in kefir juice. The great thing about kefir culturing your fruit juices is that the cultures are feeding on the sugar in the juice. So um, I have talked to customers who are diabetics. They will let their kefir juice, once it cultures and you put it in the refrigerator, they will let it sit for a couple of extra days before they start drinking on it um, so that it gives the cultures a little bit longer to feed on the sugar and they don't get that rapid intake of blood sugar. Their blood sugar levels don't go up. Of course, each person is different. Um, but the longer the cultures are there feeding on the juice, the less sugar is in that juice. Does that answer your I'll question? I'll use it for the brownies, and then I'll give it to you. Yeah. And then go kill it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, kombucha and kefir, it, the organisms are feeding on that. Yep. And they can start produ they produce carbon dioxide and produ start producing yeast because they're feeding on those sugars. So yes, absolutely. So if your kids are, or grandkids are super big juice drinkers and you're trying to cut back on all of that, yes, there's it's natural sugar, but there's still sugar there, um, then keep, keep culturing your fruit juices is a great way to cut back on how much sugar they're getting. So, all right. okay. Okay, um, so we're having the Hatch Chili Hamburgers, burgers here. We made them kind of slider sized for you today. And we went ahead, we didn't want to turn this into a bread making class. So we went ahead and milled the flour, mixed up the bread dough. So Ashley is going to show you how she makes her little slider hamburger buns. So we have the dough. Did you? Um, I thought we were doing the brownies and this first so that we got were, this out of the way. No, I thought no? you were going to go ahead and do oh, the okay. start the bread dough while okay. I do the brownies. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. You know what? You want to wait? It doesn't matter. Okay. So let's just do it. Yeah. I'll just run our yep. dough easy mat this way. That's Greatest one, mat ever. Ethel and Lucy. All right. We're not, we're not going to Ethel we and Lucy We have not it. exploded anything Nothing. yet or set anything on fire. Nothing. Not today. <laughs> there is a video somewhere out there. So Ashley's going to um, begin shaping the hamburger buns. Now, if you want a full-size hamburger, like a quarter pounder or a third a pound of hamburger, then this recipe, this is the basic bread dough from our, our uh, recipe collection, the one that we make just about everywhere. Um, we use two parts white wheat and one part red wheat today. Um, I normally use red wheat. Ashley normally uses white wheat, so I compromised today to make her happy. But I did have to put a little red wheat in there. And so it's the basic bread dough, one recipe. We just mixed it up, let the bread machine knead it. One basic recipe will make 13 or 14 full-size hamburger buns. 
but because we wanted to make little slider size, which is great if you're having a party, and all of these, these recipes, like I said, they've got some heat, and if you add all of this cauliflower and the sweet potato fries and a burger and a salad, that's a, that's a pretty hefty meal for a full-size burger. So um, we made little sliders. So Ashley got about 24 buns. Yep. I got about 22, I think, this morning. When so I, made I them. typically, and I actually, when I do hamburger buns, I actually do 16. Um, I try to keep it pretty dividing, you know, math. I was homeschooled. Math's not my thing. No, I'm just kidding. Math is my thing. But, um, but so I typically minutes. get about 16 hamburger buns is what I traditionally do, but that's also because my husband is super picky about burger to bun ratio. It is a serious, serious thing. Serious. And he likes more burger to his bun. So, um, so I get 16 hamburger buns. So actually what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use half of this and do eight regular size hamburger buns so that you can see. And then I'll use the other half because I get 24 slider buns and I'll do 12 out of this one. Does that make sense? Which is also, I mean, you could do that anytime. So, um, and I totally eyeball. You My, can weigh. You can I, weigh it, but I, ain't nobody got time for that. But for classes, we do try to weigh. So while Ashley is um, shaping the buns here and dividing the dough, she'll show you how she rounds and makes her bun hamburger buns. I'm going to make the hatch chili brownies. Okay, that recipe in your booklet, it's the last recipe in the booklet, it's on page 30. Okay, so you'll notice one box brownie mix is the first ingredient. No, that's not happening. We're going to use freshly milled flour. So I went on a search to say how can, you know, on the internet, because it's so amazing to get all kinds of information, brownie mixes, homemade, you know, how to make, it was my brownie recipe. The, the one and a half cups of sugar, cup of flour, it was the exact as my brownie recipe in my um, book. The only difference here, instead of butter, you're going to use the olive oil. Now, these are going to have a little kick. Um, the first time I tried this recipe was, a, I always loved a recipe test on Wednesdays. We have a lot of employees here on Wednesday, but then I take it all to church and let them take, because we eat at church, and I'm like, okay, because I don't need to eat a whole pan full of brownies. But um, So I took them to church. There was a lady that came late. Our pastor had already started teaching, and all of a sudden she raised her hand. She said, I have a question. And uh, he said, okay. And she goes, who made the brownies? They are delicious. <laughs> and it was amazing. Like I said, they've got a little kick. If you don't want that much kick, or if you're going to make these brownies for another event, I'm telling you, the blood orange oil, I love orange and chocolate, mm. the raspberry, the strawberry, any oil you could replace with the butter and just change that brownie up. For the flour, instead of soft wheat flour, which is great pastry flour, those of you that have been in class, you know what flour I love to use in my brownies? The Ezekiel flour, because that's wheat, spelt, barley, millet, lentils, and three kinds of beans ground into flour. And uh, so that's what I've already um, mixed up. I've already milled the flour here this morning, but that's what I used was the Ezekiel flour. Okay, what we're going to actually do, um, I'm going to scooch mom over a little closer to me, mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to change uh, the camera view for online so that they can see the overhead of both of what we're doing. Um, so there we go. So I've got my Dough Easy rolling mat that is awesome, awesome, awesome silicone mat. Um, and then I'm just spritzing my the dough with a little bit of olive oil and rubbing it on my hands. I like to work with olive oil versus flour um, because flour, once it bakes on there, it, kind of can leave a residue on the bread sometimes that my kids don't care for. So now I'm gonna show you how I shape my hamburger buns and my dinner rolls. So I'm gonna take one of the, the balls of dough and I'm gonna put it in my the palm of my hand I'm and another. I'm just gonna kind of fold right this in to the middle and working around. And you kind of do it against cupping your hand. Does that make sense? And I'm just gonna kind of work it around till it I kind of pinch it under, and then when I flip it over, it's a nice round hamburger bun. I do that to all of them. 
So just keep working it around in the palm of your hand. I make all of them into these rounds. Now, nobody wants a perfectly round globe looking hamburger bun. Everybody's used to them being a little more flat. The trick is go ahead and shape all of them. Then once you put them all on your cookie sheet, you're gonna go through and you're gonna flatten every single one of them before they start rising. That will help them to hold their shape and not rise up round on top. Does that make sense? Um, another trick that I do um, just because of working full time and a lot of times, you know, I'm having to go home and make hamburger buns for dinner that night. Um, I will actually double the yeast in this recipe to help the dough rise a little faster. Um, so you are not gonna hurt anything by doing that. So if you need your bread dough to rise a little faster, you can add a little extra yeast. So there's my eight hamburger buns, okay? Then let, we're just gonna do the same thing with our little, our smaller pieces of dough. And if you want, if you or your family like more bun to burger ratio, then only make 12 or 14 balls of dough. It makes it super simple. And I don't know if you also noticed while I was dividing the dough, um, a chef friend of ours told us this um, trick with catering or serving you know, a pan of brownies or something like that to make sure it's a whole lot easier to divide dough in half and then in quarters and then in half again than to try and eyeball 24 little balls of dough from one big blob of dough. So go simple. And if you do have kids or grandkids that are struggling in math, get them in the kitchen. It makes so much more sense, fractions and dividing and all of that when they can visually see it with their food. And I have also found that baking and cooking with your children, um, they're more prone to eat what you put in front of them if they had some part in creating it. And if you have um, funny ingredients, call it the secret ingredient, and they'll be totally fine with it, like adding spinach powder to their smoothies and things like that. So, all right. So as with any quick bread or um, unyeasted bread or cake or cookie, you don't wanna knead and mix a lot. So in this recipe, we went ahead and I mixed together the oil, the egg, the sugar in place of white sugar. Of course, we use honey granules here. So um, my honey granules and the vanilla. Now, one thing I did notice in box brownie mixes, they all had water added, which is not in my recipe. So two tablespoons of water I did add because that was just consistent everywhere. And um, now I am doubling this recipe to go in a nine by 13 pan. So if you make just the single recipe, it's either gonna go in an eight by eight baking pan, or it can go in the, um, you know, the Pyrex like eight and a half by 11 pan that's a little thinner. You could do a single recipe in that, okay? So, or I think it's six by 11 or something. You know what I'm talking about, that, that smaller Pyrex dish. So I'm gonna add my water to my liquid and um, like I said, you don't want to overmix cakes, cookies, things like that, because you don't want that gluten development. And then the other thing that um, this one brownie mix said that it was the del most delicious, you know, homemade brownie mix, they did add some chocolate chips. So I'll add a little bit of chocolate chips. But other than that, it is my basic recipe. So this is my flour, the honey granules, and the cocoa powder. I'm gonna go ahead and put my chocolate chips in. So, and why do you need a brownie mix? You see how fast that was? Okay. And especially, I'm telling you, I love the, I love using the oil instead of the butter because you gotta melt the butter. So it's like, okay, this kind of is easier to mix up than Well, and using it's butter. instantly di uh, dairy free yes. when you're using an oil instead of the butter. My daughter, Catherine, um, is 17 and she has a dairy allergy. Um, so we, I love using um, the oil instead of melted butter. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there are so many different flavor oils out there. So your combinations are fantastic. Like so said, here uh, is our little slider buns, 
all done. So there's our 12, and then I will move our eight hamburger buns to my other pan. See how easy that was? So. All right. So like I said, if you want to make this for another meal dessert and didn't want the heat, then pick out another oil, or you can always just use plain olive oil or coconut oil melted. But um, I think the raspberry would be delicious, the strawberry. The those blood, are vinegars. The, I mean vinegars. I'm sorry, I keep saying that. Yes, those the are vinegar. vinegars. But the blood orange the blood would be orange, delicious um, for sure. That's right. Those are vinegars. Those are vinegars. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I totally confused you. So, yeah, we don't have a raspberry or strawberry no. oil. Yeah, but... But the orange would be delicious. Or uh, I don't know about the lemon. That hmm. would be weird. That would be kind of weird. Now it got me wanting. Um, quick tip for cleaning, because this is rather large and flimsy. So I want to show you. Um, these are our little EVOO bottles. And we have one with oil and one with water in it. Um, they come as a two pack. And I, I just spray this with water. And then I use. Um, a paper towel or a cloth and just wipe up the excess oil and it is way easier to clean on this hard surface than to try and fumble around with it in your sink. Okay, so these are ready to pop in the oven. You don't want to overbake brownies. You, yeah, just so they're not jiggly anymore. If you overbake them, then they're going to be dry and it's amazing how fast that'll happen. So I'm just going to pop them in a 350 oven. And there we go. And now it's clean and dry, and I can fold it up. Um, did y'all notice on here that it has um, your pie rounds for pie crust or even pizza dough, if you're doing that on here? It has measurements from the center line, 0 to 15 on both sides. So if you're measuring things that way. Um, it also comes with these um, little sticks, for lack of a better term, um, that you put on here that create risers. So then you put your cookie dough here and you fold it over and the risers set the thickness of your dough. And then you use your rolling pin to roll it all the same thickness, unfold it and cut your cookies out. So fantastic tool to have in the kitchen. And I love how big it is. When you're All rolling right. a full recipe out of cinnamon rolls, it's so nice because that roll is, is this long and then you can slide it up and use the, um, the graduations, the measurements there to cut your cinnamon rolls exactly the same size. All righty. So um, before we move away from the brownies, even though we won't need it until later when the brownies are cool and ready to serve, I'm going to go ahead and make the cream cheese icing there. It says drizzle, but mine came out a lot thicker than a drizzle. So we might just, uh, I piped in a Ziploc bag or a piping bag or something and just put a little dollop on. So that's how we'll finish the brownies. We'll cut them. When they're cool, we'll put the little dollop of this cream cheese icing and then finish it with a little tiny sprinkle of the chili verde salt. So, I mean, it is a layer of flavors that you're just going to go Oh my goodness, every, every bite just takes you a little, a little down there. So, of course, I've, um, I think I've doubled this icing. It doesn't use a lot of cream cheese, and I kept looking because the recipe in the book calls for a quarter of a cup. And I'm like, that's a very unusual measurement for cream cheese. So, um, I looked it up, and it said a quarter of a cup is equal to an ounce. So, um, that's what I wrote there. So, that's, uh, that's the measurement I'm going to use. And then I'm going to use strained yogurt instead of sour cream. If you've ever seen our yogurt strainers that we have out there where you put your container of yogurt, I use the whole milk, a good brand that has full spectrum of good bacteria, and um, just dump it in there, and it'll strain the whey off, and it'll come to a thickness that's very similar to sour cream, or if you let it go even longer, it's very similar to cream cheese. So I've doubled this recipe. So I'm using four tablespoons, I think, of this strained yogurt. Could you get me a dry measuring spoon? Yes, I will. And then um, 
for the powdered, um, I mean, for the, yeah, for the powdered honey granule, because we don't use powdered sugar here, um, I just use a blender, put my, those honey granules in, and blend it till it's powdery, and that'll help it to be, uh, go into, dissolve a little faster, more like your powdered sugar. So we'll just use a couple of tablespoons of that. And then now, for the secret ingredient, we're going to use a couple of ounces of the habanero vinegar, or a couple of tablespoons. And since I doubled it, I'll use two tablespoons. And these little measuring cups are amazing when you're measuring out tablespoons of oils and vinegars. So I think that's it. And then we're just going to turn it on and let it whisk up. And it only takes a little dollop, so it really doesn't take a lot. Actually, I'm really thinking I want a little more. Thinking about grabbing the rest of that cream cheese in there. Putting a little more. You want to grab oh, it? It's it, in the drawer. That's probably enough you think? for all okay. those brownies, yeah. Okay. Do you so, need to let it whisk a little longer? Yep, yeah, I'll let it whisk a little bit more. All right. And whenever I'm making an icing, um, whether it be cream cheese or just a buttercream or whatever that's uh, glazed for my cinnamon rolls, because the honey granules, which y'all all know, do y'all know what honey granules are? Evaporated cane juice. Um, because they're not crystallized, they're just evaporated, they don't tend to dissolve as quickly as, say, your sugar or your powdered sugar would be. Would. Um, so when I'm making an icing, I do just run the honey granules through a blender, not your grain mill, okay? Through a blender and powder them up, and then I try to make my icing as soon as I finish making my cinnamon rolls or whatever while they're baking, while they're rising. That way, um, and I just kind of leave it in the bowl, and then I'll come back and whisk it again when I'm ready to ice the cake or ice the cinnamon rolls or whatever. This is a little little different mixture, so it's, it's not really one that you're fluffing up like as an icing. But that's just a little trick that I learned because it just takes a little more dissolving that uh, that um, honey granules. Okay, all right. So we'll just set that aside for now and come back when our brownies are done. So while we have the Ankish Room up here, and those of you that know the Ankish Room mixer, largest, finest mixer in the world, but we're gonna use it today, multiple applications. We're gonna use um, the motor and the base as our blender motor base. So. Um, <laughs> The pepper jam, you want to turn to the pepper jam, is on page 11. Now, when I first thought of pepper jam, I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. Now, I've had hot pepper jelly, but this, and I thought this is going to be like jelly that we put on a hamburger, but it's not gelled necessarily at all. So, so easy to make, and I'm also one of those that I like fast and easy, so when I see a recipe like this, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'll probably have to roast the peppers and peel the peppers and da-da-da. Nope, diced peppers. So I already diced up three peppers, red peppers. And then we're going to pour our pineapple juice over the top. Which I already have a third of a cup of pineapple juice. And just pour it in. And peppers get a little frothy, so you think, oh, this is never going to come out pretty like this. I thought that yesterday when I frothed it all up. I'm like, oh, it's not, it's going to be weird looking. Nope, once it, um, Once it cooks down, it's absolutely beautiful. So if you look at it like that and you're like, hmm, that's what mine looked like yesterday, and this is what it looks like after you cook it down. So now we're just going to, we can whisk away our Ankish room. 
and we'll put our hot plate up here because now all you're going to do is add your honey granules for the sugar. So if your recipe calls for sugar, you just use honey granules. Brown sugar is sucanot, but this one, we, we want that sweeter, milder flavor of the sweetener. Then we're going to add our um, habanero, pineapple, balsamic, and then we're just going to simmer it. I kind of bring it up to, um, mm -hmm. I kind of bring it up to a nice simmer. And, um, and then as soon as it's bubbling nicely, then I just uh, reduce that heat down to one and then just set it aside and let it reduce down. And it may take 45 minutes to an hour, 20, 30. It just depends on how hot you simmer it at. You don't want to scorch it. You don't want it to be boiling and boiling away. So because I was doing so many things yesterday, I just kind of just put it as low heat so I didn't have to be concerned that it would reduce too quickly and then scorch. So um, I just uh, set it low. So how easy is that? Now all it's got to do is just sit here and simmer away. And that one recipe makes about a pint. Because that, that was one recipe. Um, so. Do you want to let them actually let it just simmer over there so that our hot pet plate yeah. is free for the yeah. onions here? In so a I'm just going to bring this up to a simmer and just let it sit back there and do its thing. Oh, you're going to let them simmer yep. it? I'm going to let them oh, okay. simmer it. Mm -hmm. Yep. All okay. right. Y'all are eating. How, how you like it? Have you tasted everything? Have you taken a bite of everything yet? No? Are y'all one of those that eats your french fries first? Sometimes you do that, don't you? Do you? I do. Anyway. Um, yeah. All right. I see smiles. Nobody's sweating yet. Nobody's running to the water cooler. That's good. How'd you like the mules, the Moscow mules? Yeah, weren't they very refreshing and delicious? Yeah. <coughs> okay. All right, so next on our list, we're going to show you how to make all that. So first thing we're going to do is get the cauliflower roasting. Now, we realize that we could have done this in any order because you, we already have your food prepared. <coughs> Oftentimes in class, I try to prepare the food and, and you're eating what I make, and so I have to time it perfectly. So we were, Ashley and I talked about it yesterday, and we're like, well, we would like to go ahead and do the demo like you would prepare this meal, okay? So if you were going to do this as a meal, you would get the brownies cooking first. and uh, Get your and hamburger then, buns going yep. and ready to bake in the oven. Yep, and then start your cauliflower because that's going to be the, the longest baking time. Okay. The cauliflower and the sweet potato fries yep. are going to be your longest baking time. Okay. So you want to so. do the cauliflower? I'll let you. Oh, okay. I'll get the I'll get the sweet potatoes ready and set up in the mandolin so while the you do this. So the creamy chipotle cauliflower is on page 22 in your booklet. I know you're enjoying your food, um, but it's it's super super easy. The recipe calls for two tablespoons of cornstarch. That helps that cauliflower crisp up nicely. But we try to avoid corn here and corn starch, so we're using arrowroot starch. So we're going to use a couple of tablespoons of arrowroot starch here, which you can use it interchangeably with corn starch. And we sell this in the store here too. It's a key ingredient uh, uh, if you're doing a lot of uh, gluten-free baking as well. You use this in place of the corn starch. So we're just going to toss this cauliflower with that cornstarch. Come back here. And then, Ashley, if you can measure me the, the hatch chili, I need about a quarter of a cup. Okay. Here it is. I had them. Oh, sorry. Run, go fill it up again for me. Need and a quarter then the, of a cup. pass me the chili verde salt. So this is the chili verde infused sea salt that we're going to use in this recipe, two teaspoons. Now, I haven't tried this recipe. Ashley tried it, and she said it was delicious. But we did um, do the French fries and the hamburgers one night. Okay, so you just want to toss your cauliflower, get it nice and coated. 
think the hardest part about roasting vegetables is just making sure all the vegetables are nice and coated. Other than that, it's so easy and fun. And the key to roasting vegetables, space. Space on your cookie sheet. You want them nice and spread out. One um, word I'll give you about um, the USA pans, you really don't want to roast vegetables on those. They don't like having oil on them and they don't like super, super high temperature. So um, get that old pan out that you, that you don't use for baking anymore. So these are good and coated. So I'm just going to spread them. Because if you pile them up too much, they're, you're really steaming them, not roasting them. Yep. Okay. So same with caramelizing your onions and anything like that. So we're just going to, this is a little overkill pan, but that's all right. We'll just spread them out nice here. You just spread them to go in yeah, after. Yeah, after they cook. Mm -hmm. All righty. And then the other key of roasting vegetables, high, high heat. And just, honestly, I don't think you can burn, I guess you could burn them, but when I did the sweet potato fries, I actually kind of forgot about them for a minute, and they got a little charred. I think I like the charred ones better, and I love charred broccoli and um, Brussels sprouts, so don't worry too much if you, they get a little dark and you go, oh no, I burned it. They're probably still very delicious. All right, and then for the, um, we're going to go ahead and mix up the creamy aioli. Um, what's great about all of these recipes is a lot of it can be done ahead of time. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about the, the burger, the patties here in a minute, but you could absolutely get to this stage and throw these in a Ziploc bag and throw them in, in your refrigerator. Because the olive oil, olive oil is kind of a natural preservative. It, it covers everything and and so you could do this in the morning or do this earlier in the week um, get it to this stage put it in a bag and put it in your fridge till you're ready to roast it um, same with the chipotle aioli you can totally mix this up put it in a jar put it in a container stick it in your fridge and have it ready to go um, so while the cauliflower cooks we're going to go ahead and mix up the aioli which is the mayonnaise and then the, where did it go? This, so these are the new um, flavors for second quarter. That's the other great thing about Olivelli is just about every quarter, they come out with a new flavor theme, basically. Um, we've heard what the theme is for next <gasps> quarter and we are very excited for it. And we will be, uh, yeah, featuring those probably in July or August. So, um, but this is the new rub. So they came out with the infused hatch chili oil, which if you're not familiar with that, those are the green chilies from like New Mexico. That's what a hatch chili is. So um, the hatch chili infused oil, the pineapple habanero balsamic vinegar, and then a chipotle lime rub and seasoning, which is amazing. And then the chili verde flake sea salt. Those were their four new flavors. Which that's the thing. When Ashley and I make up an Olivelli class for ourselves, we just, we use so many oils and vinegars and spices and rubs because we love so many of their recipes. But when we realized we were going to do this theme and y'all could just have the book and have other recipes, there's some other really great recipes in here. Yes. But every recipe in this book uses four Olivelli products. The hatch chili oil, the pineapple habanero um, balsamic, the lemon, Chipotle lime. Yep, the lime rub, and the chili verde salt. Delicious. Okay, so that makes this class kind of easy because you don't have to go out there and go, oh, what all do I want? So, anyway. Okay, so we're going to do our two teaspoons of chipotle lime rub and seasoning there. Then we're going to add the pineapple habanero balsamic vinegar, which I would go ahead and now that mom has shared that with you, that all of these recipes um, have these four items. I would, if you have enjoyed all the food that you ate this morning and you know you are going to want these flavors, I would definitely go with either the 250 milliliter size or the 500 because 
you see all of these recipes, it's a quarter of a cup, a third of a cup, three tablespoons, four tablespoons. So you're going to use them, especially if you're going to make, recreate all of these recipes yes. or try some of the other ones in I the book. I took that little box home um, to try the recipes the first time. I used the 100 milliliter that meal for dinner and I'm like, well, that's that. So anyway. And also one thing we do want to point out too, there's so many recipe cards out there and they have so many recipe ideas and they typically will tell you an oil or vinegar to use or a season of spice. Remember, recipes are just suggestions. Yes, you'll change the flavor up, the dynamic up, if you use another flavored oil or a rub or something like that. But make it your own, because I've done that with um, several recipes. I'm like, oh, man, I don't have the rosemary rub, or I don't have this salt. Then either use a plain salt or one mm -hmm. or the other. I wouldn't use a vanilla <laughs> salt in any of these. But um, anyway, so that's just know that, that don't go, oh, I can't make this recipe because I don't have that oil. Find something similar. If you have the Tuscan herb and not the caramelized garlic, go for it. You know? Yep. All right. That's okay. All right. So now we're going to get our sweet potato fries ready. You could absolutely cut these by hand, um, but I wanted to show you our favorite mandolin slicer. And I know there are a lot of mandolin slicers out there, and I've owned several of them. And there's always all these millions of parts that like some of them come in carrying cases and they're just a mess and then they're they're dangerous to clean because the knives are so sharp when i saw this one at a trade show i was like uh that's the coolest mandolin i've ever seen because all the blades and all of the options for cutting and slicing and all of that are all built in so this is it and it folds up and it's just super easy. You're not having to dig out blades or anything like that. Um, what's great is all of your settings are here on the side. So you have, so you have a row of one set of blades or a row of two sets of blades. And then your slicing blade is here. So by twisting this, you're changing the thickness on the, uh, the slicing blade there. You want to go to the overhead? I will go to the overhead. So one row of blades, two rows of blades, and then this is your thickness setting. And then you choose no, no Julienne, Julienne blade, blade, one row or two rows by sliding this. So all of your options are here. It even shows you if you want to do waffle fries where you need to set. So everything is right there on the side for you. Um, it even has, so the, the guard comes off by just sliding off this rail. Um, but you may notice that it has these little indentions and these teeth longer. That's for if you're doing something like a long carrot or a zucchini that doesn't that fit in here and you're wanting to do shaves of, then you can, it'll still hold it long ways and you can still cut. Um, so I'm and gonna to clean, let me show you oh, yeah. real quick. Just pop this up, do your blade like that. Basically rinse it off. If you do need to, to scrub here, you just close that down and, and you know put it all to zero and then you can wash that if you do need yeah. to. But really just kind of rinse it off and I just leave the blade like that to dry. Yep. And that's it. So, so easy. And this is actually, you would flip the blade. This is your waffle fry blade on that side. So it cuts your waffles for you. It's, a, it's amazing to do a waffle fry potato. But that is it. So this is how I have found that I like to do my sweet potato fries. And obviously we did more like a shoestring fry is what we did for you guys today. Um, and so I put it on the thickest slicing and then I just raise one set of blades. Two, I, it would give me like little teeny tiny julienne slices. So I just want the one, um, the one size. So then I'm gonna put my, slide my guard in here. And then this is how I have found. Um, go ahead and cut your sweet potatoes to fit, okay? So that it makes it so much easier there. And then with your, little guard thingy, these push up and the little teeth come out so that you can get your sweet potato. So I will go ahead and 
on the counter, push it down on my sweet potato, and then all I do is take it over here. And now you're going you're gonna to push, give it a little pressure down on the button, slide it forward. Sweet potatoes are the hardest. Come back and push down till you hear it hit the... But it's got a nice handle back here that she's holding on to, and it's got rubberized legs so that it doesn't slide. And I'm just making sure it gets all the way back down, level with the tray back here until you get down to the, to the end. And then I just cut that. There you go. Give me that but then let me show you. And there they are. All of your perfect little shoestring fries. Like I Isn't said, that awesome? we're big dehydrators and we had an old mandolin and when we saw this one it was like, oh my goodness, not, you know, because it had a little case with blades all in it and it's amazing. And let me go ahead and just, I won't do a, a waffle fry, but when you do it on the waffle setting, here is the, the trick that you need to know. Um, and actually let me pop that off really quick. Um, so when you're doing your potatoes for the waffle fries, you're gonna go down, you're gonna come up, and you're gonna quarter turn it and cut it again. Then come back, go to the original position, down, quarter turn. That's how you get those waffle cuts, okay? So just food for thought for later on. And the, French, the sweet potato fry recipe is actually right here um, on the opposite page, page 28, with the, the Hatch Chili Burgers. Check my brownies. All right. And I'm thinking this um, mandolin slicer is probably, um, oh gosh, it's probably going on six years old now. Oh yeah. We've never had to sharpen the blades, nothing. So it is a great tool. All right. So now all we're going to do is toss these with a couple of tablespoons of the hatch chili oil. I don't know if you noticed too, we had previously, um, before the class, we had peeled the sweet potatoes and just put them in a bowl full of water. You can absolutely do that and put your potatoes in uh, the refrigerator. So even go ahead and slice them into the fries. Put them in a bowl, fill them with water, stick them in the fridge, and then just completely drain them, dry them off a little bit before you toss them and season them. Amazing. And then you can, that way you can do that part ahead of time as well. And it works beautifully with white potatoes too. So if you know you're going to have, if you know you're going to have mashed potatoes or whatever, just go ahead and prepare them. And I've even prepared too many when I was, you know, doing something for an event, and they'll keep a week or so in the. Re now you put them in the refrigerator. You cover them with water and put them in the refri refrigerator. And I was gonna do mashed potatoes that week after the event, and I was like, oh, I've got those potatoes already cut, so it's really kinda nice. Mm -hmm. So now again, we're gonna just uh, take our rubbed sweet potatoes and just spread them out <coughs> here. Now we're gonna put the salt on at the end. So we just did the half <coughs> chili oil and the, um, chip the chipotle lime, how is it? Chipotle lime rub. Never know which one's first, the lime or the chipotle. <laughs> And you, again, you want them to spread out, be kind of single layer. And I would definitely check them about halfway through the baking time, possibly stir them, flip them over. Same with the, with the cauliflower, so it gets nice and crispy and, and golden brown all over. Um, I would do that to both of them. So yeah, and we're just gonna, go ahead. 
Well, I was just going to say, but they've already eaten, so you already know. These were so delicious to me as far as the flavor. They did. I was sweating because I'm a wimp when it comes to hot things, but I kept eating them because they were so delicious. <laughs> but when these are done, we're going to finish them with, um, which I thought was interesting, that the recipe has you finish them with the, the salsa, the chili verde sea salt and fresh lime juice. Did you, you squeeze? Do I did. Oh my gosh, loved, loved, loved it. Squeeze think, with the fresh lime juice. Really good. I don't good. think y'all got the lime juice oh, on there. Sorry. It's I told really him. good. Y'all didn't get it that way, but it's really good when you squeeze the lime on them right at the end. And it actually, because the oil has crisped up the fry and it has cooked, squeezing it with the lime juice and then sprinkling, sprinkling the salt gives the salt something to stick to on the fry. Sorry. And it was a, it was, it was nice. I've never squeezed fresh lime on my sweet potato fries, but it was really, really good and just kind of gave you another punch of that lime flavor. So sorry, I cheated y'all because I was like, y'all don't need to squeeze the lime on there. I didn't do it. So, but I should have asked Ashley first. It's okay. It's okay. They aren't they delicious and they were totally fine. Oh, we have another pan of sweet potatoes fries. Oh, good. Those will be delicious. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay, so next we are going to um, do the burgers. So one thing I want to share with you about the burgers. Um, I had totally planned on making this entire meal at home on a Friday night. And I don't re really remember what happened that Friday here at work, but I know that I left here wanting to cry because I was so exhausted. And I called my husband because he had already gone to the store and bought all the ingredients. And I was like, I'm stopping somewhere and I'm buying dinner and I'm coming home and I'm not cooking. I quit. And so he said, that's fine. And so Saturday I woke up refreshed. It was a new day. I felt better about life and cooking in general. And I was like, okay, but my husband is a fireman and he was at the fire station on Saturday. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and prepare because the meat was already thawed. I said, I'm going to go ahead and make all of the patties, and I'll just throw them in the freezer. And then Sunday, when we get home from church, I'll bring my frozen patties out of the freezer that are already made. They can thaw when we get home, and then by Sunday evening, we'll grill. They'll have thawed and kind of come taking the chill off of the meat, and then we can grill them. They were so good. So you could absolutely mix these up. Um, my, our, my husband and I, we have three children, and our oldest daughter is a senior um, in high school. So she's graduating this year, moving out this fall. And then we have two boys at home, and uh, they are 15 and 14. And um, I'm beginning to see, like, the light. Like, the timer has started on Empty Nest, and it's going to be amazing. I just know it is. Um, but it's going to take some getting used to going from cooking for five Plus the boyfriend is sixth. He eats, he's at our house eating like five days a week. So it's going to be a transition going from cooking for that many um, to cooking for just a few. Mom and dad are experiencing that now, going from nine children, you know, at home growing up to all of us finally leaving. And now they're all alone and they only have to cook for two. So very, very different, right? So these would be awesome to do a big batch cooking make all your patties, cook the two or three or four that you need, freeze the rest, and then just pull them out as you need them. Um, freeze them on a piece of parchment paper on a cookie sheet till they're completely frozen. Then you can cut the parchment paper in strips and kind of fold it over and then stack them on top of each other um, and put them down in a Ziploc bag if you wanted to so that they don't stick together and they're easy to pull one or two out. So, all right. So we already have our pepper jam going and I made this all in the same evening. I, like I mm -hmm. said, we, I started my pepper jam first. And, um, so now we're going to caramelize the onions. I have never found that it takes quite as long to caramelize onions as some recipes say, but we'll see. We cut these a little thicker today. But I'm going to use um, one of our new pans. These are by Fissler. And um, 
If you've never used a Fissler pan, they're amazing. They're all, their claim to fame is their cook star bottom, which the best way I can describe it is kind of like expansion joints. So you can heat and cool and heat and cool and it will never warp. And um, their new coating, it is an aluminum pan, but their nonstick coating is silicone carbonite, I believe it is uh, the way you say it. And very strong, very durable. They said they have one vendor that literally tried to destroy the pan and they couldn't. You can use metal um, utensils here. Perfect heat distribution, a great, great pan. We're so happy to have these um, nonstick pans in. So um, I'm going to, the way I caramelize onions is I typically get my pan hot, then I'm gonna add my oil, stir my onions around a, a few minutes, just keep stirring them, and then I turn that heat down and then just let them sit here. So we're gonna get that going. And I'm gonna mix up the burger meat, um, which this is, did you do a pound and a half? Yes. It is exactly what the recipe book says. So pound and a half of ground beef. We've got our egg, a couple of teaspoons of tomato paste. Then we're gonna add a um, teaspoon, um, eh, carefully measured. There you go. And this is the hatch chili oil and the onions. Again, if you didn't want that much heat, then just use a regular oil. But I actually, when I tasted the onions just by themselves, it was like, whoo, okay, those are hot. But then once I put it on the burger with the pepper jam, to me, the burger wasn't, wasn't hot. Right? Y'all good? Yeah. Nobody's run up for the water. Yeah, yeah, maybe y'all did. <laughs> so our, um, our meat has our egg, our tomato paste, our teaspoon of Worcestershire, um, a tablespoon of the chipotle lime rub and seasoning, and a teaspoon of the chili verde sea salt. And then we're just gonna mix this up. And there is just, there's just no other way, right? Mm -mm. To mix hamburger meat for meatloaf or burgers or whatever. <laughs> I will tell you one thing, <clears throat> heating the hatch chili oil, <clears throat> yeah. Have you ever inhaled pepper when it was getting hot? So yeah. So we were all coughing in here and we cleared it before y'all came in so that not everybody would be choking. But now we're, I forgot we're doing it in the class. So yep. we're gonna all be coughing here in a minute. I'm just gonna hold my breath. Okay. <coughs> yeah, it's already started. You told them about room temperature meat, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Definitely wanna let your meat come to room temperature before you cook it, either on, uh, you know, in a skillet on the stove top um, we actually used our big um, Zoharushi electric griddle that we normally would use for pancakes. That's what we use to do all of the burgers. So if you, yeah. hey, Memorial Day is coming, Fourth of July is coming, um, and so doing a big batch uh, of burgers, if you wanna do it on a skillet, you could certainly do these on the grill if you wanted to, but we did really like that crust that doing it on a griddle, Gabe, or doing it in a skillet on the stovetop. But if you have a lot to do, absolutely pull out that, that electric pancake griddle and use that to do your, do your meat. So All here's right. our brownies. Oh, let me change to this view. Okay. For everybody online. There's the brownies. They're not jiggly. They did take a little extra, like 10 minutes to bake. So I think the oil maybe is a little different than the butter, but you just wanna now let them cool for a little bit. All right, and then we'll come back to those. What I'm going to use to make my burgers, and what can I, what could I put these on? Do you want to get me a yep. cookie, cookie sheet? sheet. Awesome. Um, so I'm just going to use the largest cookie scoop, ice cream scoop that we have out uh, in the store, and I'm just going to kind of do a nice, healthy mound. And what I do before I start shaping it into patties or whatever, is I will go ahead and get all my blobs made so that I only have to stand there and handle them kind of one time. And this is about what I did for the, what I would call a slider, but I think that's a pretty 
nice size burger, especially if you're going to serve everything we serve. I think that's a nice, nice meal. And if somebody wants two, then they can have two. And then what I kind of did when I got down to the end and there wasn't really enough to do another patty, I just kind of went through and I just pinched off a little bit and added it to each one. Okay. And then now, just kind of gently press it together. And make your patty. You could use, you know, those handy hamburger patty presses. You could certainly use one of those if you wanted to and make it whatever size you wanted. And a trick I learned from Charmaine Skillen from Salt Sisters is go back through and press a little indention in that middle of that patty. And um, have you ever cooked your own formed patties and they get, they rise in the middle for whatever reason. So go ahead and make that little indention and then that'll keep the burger nice and flat instead of it bubbling up rounded. All right. And help it cook more evenly. So at home, I had laid a piece of, of parchment paper on my cookie sheet, laid my patties out, <clears throat> and, uh, and then just stuck them in my freezer till they were frozen solid. And since we were, I did it on the Saturday and we were going to eat them on Sunday, I just left them on the parchment paper until, until Sunday afternoon when we got home. And then just pulled the entire tray out and let them thaw right there on the counter. So there we go. You gonna show them the French fries? Yes. Okay. So there's our burgers. So we'll finish these fries. So I will squeeze the lime over because I'm anxious to taste it now. So just a little squeeze of lime, which is funny that I didn't do this because um, when I go to eat Mexican, you know, they bring you the chips to the table. I squeeze it with lime and sprinkle salt on them, and they're so delicious. So I. I don't know why I didn't think about it here. And then a trick I learned from Chef Lars Liebisch is uh, the higher you go to sprinkle things on, I mean, not ridiculous, but um, the more evenly distributed. Like if you just sprinkle here, then it's going to just kind of be right there. Brad asked him one day, he thought, chefs were just being very dramatic and flamboyant and he goes no that you go higher up and it it more widely spreads what you're just wanting to sprinkle on something so i thought well that's clever so now i'm curious go for it mm. all right so now our um cauliflower is done so we want to show you how we build the cauliflower so we've got our Chipotle aioli mixture here. And we've got our serving dish. Gonna grab our cauliflower out of the oven. And there it is. So I'm just going to you got it? Yep. They're nice and crispy on the bottom, so I'm just going to kind of pop them up here. And we're just going to put this right into our serving dish. And I didn't get a real huge head of cauliflower here. The ones I did for y'all were a large head. I just got a smaller head, so um, 
And then we're just going to drizzle over the chipotle aioli. Give this a toss. Now, the recipe has you finish with sliced green onion for some color, which we did. And then it has you slice mm. fresh, raw habaneros. We decided that is a bit much. So we just got the, the little mini bell peppers to give color, the orange and yellow color, because it's gorgeous. And there we go. I wanted to show you all the little, the little uh, buns. So yeah. those are your little slider buns. So see how they didn't turn into baseballs or golf balls. Uh, they kind of held more of that flat uh, shape because we pressed them down. So anyway, there is our, um, I think, oh, the recipe also has you top it with chopped raw cashews. Um, just because of nut allergies and things like that, we decided to leave that off. I definitely think it's there to kind of give you that kind of earthiness of the nut and a crunch because all of this is so soft. So you'll notice that in the recipe, it has you top it with cashews. And if cashews are your thing, then definitely try that when you make it at home. But there is that. I'm actually gonna set it right there. Um, will you put the French fries on, like do a little pile on the plate, a plate for me, so that we can show them at the end? All right, and are you ready for the griddle? Yep. Now you can certainly grill these burgers, but um, I really think frying them in the hatch chili oil gave them a nice moistness that wouldn't be there if you grilled them. There we go. So we're just going to keep stirring our onions. They're starting to brown a little. You don't want them to burn. Now, I if for the for the hamburgers, I probably would have sliced the onions a little thinner, but um, they're fine. A little thinner would make them a little more like shoestring, you know, once they caramelize down. All right, any questions? Y'all are quiet. The heat didn't get y'all up and rowdy. Their tummies are full. Yeah. And I just kind of sat these on the back burner all the way down to low and just every now and then come by and stir them. Just don't be in a rush with them because you don't want them to just totally brown. I like them that way, but that's not technically how you want to do a caramelized onion. But I think they're delicious. Okay. How's the pepper jam coming? Put it right there. Okay, you don't have to stir it, just kind of let it just sit here. All right, and we've got actually, when we build our burger here in a few minutes, um, this is the jar of the red pepper jam uh, that the ladies were using for all of you guys. And so instead of opening mom's nice pretty jar, um, we're, we're just gonna use out of this one. Um, question for you. Oh, so there's your hamburger buns. Whoop. And our very nonstick pan. Yes, be careful with your very <laughs> nonstick pans because you will lose them. There you go. Um, could you make this red pepper jam, mother, and can it? And what would that be considered if you wanted to can it to give as gifts? Would it be water bath? Yes. Okay. Because it's um, acid, it has the sugar and it has the habanero vinegar. 
it's got acid there so you could just jar it up and I could have put this right into a water bath canner and um, just seal it and it would be shelf stable then. Mm -hmm. uh, end of June I am actually doing a jam and jelly and basic canning class so you might want to look out for that. You should have gotten the email newsletter yesterday. I think it went out. You did not receive it for our upcoming May and June classes. Be sure you go on our website and check it out. But for future reference, go on our website, subscribe to our email newsletter. We will not fill up your email inbox, I promise. We are not that good. Back yesterday when I finished writing the article, I sent the note to my partner who sends out the email. I said, um, this really needs to go out because the, the first class is coming up in two weeks. <laughs> so, um, but subscribe to our email newsletter. Once a month we send out the newsletter with the upcoming classes for the next month or two. So we've got May. May we're limited. Um, we're only doing one class in May, May 15th. We're doing a getting started class because I don't know if you are realize that we have the building next door, which is where we do all of our packaging. It's our warehouse which is what enabled us to turn this into the store in the classroom. And we have to move in May, that building, not this one. So don't, I did not say this one. This will stay here. But our warehouse and packaging facility has to move. We have to be out by May 31st. So it, that was, it's going to be a major undertaking. So we felt like it was more than our warehouse staff and all of us are going to be on board getting ready for that move. So it's not this building, so it won't affect you as to where you come for products. It's just going to affect our warehouse and packaging and everything. So that's why May looks a little skimpy there with one class in the middle. And then June, though, we've got a class every week. We've got, um, oh, our Olivelli theme for June is going to be Father's Day called grilling and chilling and we're doing a tangerine um, chicken skewer with that tangy tangerine vinegar and it's going to be delicious so I'm still kind of thinking that I messed up with the raspberry and the strawberry it was vinegar they're not oils so I'm like oh, oh. but just throw some raspberries in the brownies see there you go that's that you could definitely do that um, you could also, if you wanted to do, instead of the pineapple habanero in the cream yep. cheese drizzle, oh, yes. that's there where you, you can use the strawberry or the raspberry vinegar. Yeah, there you go. Yep, see? There it is. See, we are Lucy and Ethel. It takes both of our minds to come up with this. Yeah. Offensive. It's no. just offensive. All right, so we've got our burgers going. I drizzled it, the griddle with the hatch chili oil, um, so it kind of gives it that a little bit of that spice there don't you think that the pineapple the red pepper jam would be so pretty in little half pint jars as Christmas gifts yeah. so so pretty and Ashley and I both thought it cooled the whole meal down a little bit just having that yeah. nice cool pepper jam on there and it wasn't really hot even though it does have the pineapple habanero in it it wasn't super super hot I'm trying to think what I ate it on the other day. I actually dished it out and ate it with something else, and I can't well, remember what I did. I have actually on. done one of the other recipes in the book, and it's the fried egg prosciutto and red pepper jam breakfast sandwich that is just, I think it's on the next page after the easy red pepper jam. So, so good. I don't do prosciutto, but um, I have found a turkey bacon that our family really, really likes. Um, and so I just did some some uh, turkey bacon, which I cooked on my stove in the peppered bacon oil. So it has more of that traditional bacon flavor. Um, and then just built my breakfast sandwich um, and the red pepper jam. Oh my gosh, it was so, so good mm. on that breakfast sandwich. So um, I have not tried the, there's a green chili breakfast hash recipe in here that sounds amazing um so yeah several other recipes in here i think the um there's a chili verde pork carnitas if you don't do pork like we don't do you could easily do this with beef or chicken um and using the spices and then there's a sweet and spicy chicken stir fry that looks amazing with grilled pineapple um so yeah lots lots of yummy things in this cheese, little booklet i think it's a total cheese. of about 12 recipes yeah, is typically cheese. what they do 
when they introduce a new theme of flavors, they have started doing um, these little recipe booklets to kind of launch those flavors. Then when the next launch comes about and they go to a new recipe booklet, then they will turn each of these recipes into the individual recipe cards. So that's, that is that. Um, all right, let's check our burgers. They still need a little bit longer. I like to do my burgers where I cook them more on this first side, longer on the first side. That way when I flip them, they don't have as long to cook. So I will let them go a little bit longer on this, on this first side. And you don't ever want to press your burgers. That, you're pressing out all the juice. Um, and then if you can, if you can hold off from eating them right away, let them rest for a few minutes. Um, they'll hold their shape a little bit better um, if you do that. So, what we used to do, dad, uh, Brad, her dad, my husband, taught me this trick. Is this might sound weird, but his mother taught him that I think, or his dad, that once you do your hamburgers, like especially if you do them on the grill, then put them on a bun and set them down in a brown paper bag <laughs> that's a little bit porous and can breathe and then roll it down and it kind of softens the bun and steams the bun so and then it lets the burgers rest for a minute but they stay nice and hot so that's I hadn't thought about that trick in a long time all right oh, getting some nice crusty caramelization on that side and that's what I'm that's what I'm checking for is that I've got some nice browned crispy hamburgers and pancakes you only flip once people think pancakes are made to be slapped and flattened they're already flat but if you want that nice fluffy pancake you let them get bubbly and kind of crisp around the edge you flip them once don't stand there then go back and forth and back and forth I don't know why people do that but it'll flatten your pancake same with burgers you really let them get some caramelization. See the, um, the here on the edge where they're, they're starting to turn brown and then flip them once. Just a little tidbit there. Had a friend uh, do a, a seminar with me up in Virginia and uh, it was so funny. I heard her giving instructions and I did not give her these instructions but some of the, our kids were gonna cook the uh, pancakes and she goes, only flip them one time. Do not beat them to death. And I was like, yes, finally, somebody that knows that trick. All right. For the cheese, I've got some nice um, deli sliced cream Havarti. It's a really creamy, creamy cheese. But you can see the slices are much bigger than the burgers. So I'm just quartering them. And then I, we put two pieces on each burger, like, you know, a quarter, so that. I'm going to go ahead and slice one of our slider buns and get it ready on our plate. Has anyone mastered the, the pushing on meat and then testing it against your finger to know if it's medium? Me neither. They do that all the time on TV and they're like, oh, it'll feel like, the, and I'm like, listen, these are working hands. I have strong muscles. So I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to feel. Oh, it's this way. Oh, that's not why. That's why I don't know. It's not there, it's there. Okay, well, whatever. I was also a piano player, and so my thumb muscles are actually really strong too, so I still don't think it would work, even if I did it. We're just going with that. We're going with that. It doesn't work for me Here's the and my strong hands. And we got this beautiful live butter lettuce today to put on the burger. So oh, so let's do this. We will do our jam. Did y'all do top and bottom or just bottom? Or just top. Or just top? just top? Okay, well, we're doing the bottom. Call me a rebel. There we go. But that looks kind of pretty with the... There's our butter lettuce. 
All right. Do we want to go ahead and put our cheese on? You ready? <laughs> yeah, they're good. Whoop. Cheese is the best thing ever. We, uh, this is a cream Havarti. So it's very, very melty, very, very creamy. It's very soft. Too. Yeah. And Deep very mild. Delicious. So we're just going to let that cheese melt on there. And that's it. And then we will top it with um, some of our caramelized onions. I'm going to check our sweet potatoes. I just remembered them. Okay. There we go. All right. And here's the sweet potatoes we did in the class. So I'm going to squeeze a little lime juice because I can't wait to try this. We're squeeze a little more. Thank you. There's your salt. And then finish with our chili verde salt. Okay, there you go. All right, I'm going to scoot this down just a little bit. And scoot this over just a little bit. Do you want to go to overhead? I will in just a second. We get a spoon mm -hmm. to scoop our some of our cauliflower onto our plate. And this way, everybody that's watching online can see the plates that you guys got to enjoy right in front of you. They can see what they're missing. All right, let's, ooh, let's do that one right there. And now some onions. Let's see, I think we salt these a little bit, don't we? That is a great question. Let's look it up really quick. The onions. I think you finish it with the salt. Ba, 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 ba. No, you do not. Okay. All right, so we're just going to add some of that to the top of our burger. Whoop. I think a fork would have been better. That is okay. Yum. It would not hurt to put more jam on there. I think jam on top uh, and bottom yep, would be let's put a little delicious. Because this might be my plate or your plate. It can be your plate. There you go. Yay. And that's it. I think we should take a picture. I know. I will. I'll whisk it okay. to the back. All right. All right. So we have one more dish to make for you. Oops, that's it. It's going to be your dessert drink to have with your brownies. Let me get a plate to move these off. All right, so what were some of your favorites? This table, what was y'all's favorite dish? The burger. The burger? Okay. How about you guys? What was your favorite? The cauliflower was yeah. your favorite back there? What about you, Bill? The jam on the burger. The jam on the burger. It makes, it just, the sweet and the cold, it like cuts through all of that and makes it so good. How about you guys? I like the burger. You liked the burger? How about you, John? The burger? You can't go wrong with a good burger. How I'm about our back table? What'd you guys like? All of it. All of it. All, All of, of it. the above. <laughs> That's true. That I asked is you true. what was your favorite before giving you dessert. That's okay. That's 
There were several things on your lunch plate to choose from. I know you're going to like the brownie, so I'm going to whisk this away. All right. You need the mixer and the blender again, yes? Yes. And the frozen pineapple that's in the back fridge. I will get that for you. Karen's going to get it. Okay. All right, so if you all want to go ahead and to page, let's see. It's the very first recipe, actually. Not your mom's pina colada. Though this one is my mom's pina colada because it does not have any alcohol, so... I'm so boring. We could tell stories, though. Mm -hmm. You would not want to see me with alcohol. That's just. It could if be. If you think funny. I'm crazy, yeah. If you think I'm crazy without it, that's why I tell people I don't do caffeine, I don't do alcohol, I don't do carbonated beverages. This is crazy without it. So yeah. All right. So Karen's getting the frozen pineapple. You need from back here, yes? Yes. And we can do that opened pineapple juice over okay. there. Do you need all now of I'm these? Gonna, um, no, I didn't know how much I was okay. going to use, and I didn't want to not have enough. Okay. I did just a single or a double recipe the other day for us, and so I'm going to quadruple it, I think. We'll hold, this blender will hold that. So, um, Me and my, well, it, I'm pr it only made that much when I made it the other day, so I'm not as brave as you think I am. And um, what I'm using here is a unsweetened coconut cream. If you want it a little bit sweeter, I would probably add agave nectar or honey granules or something like that. Yes, this yes. is what we're using in place of the cream of coconut. And um, you can get, here's a way, because there are several different coconut cream options at the grocery store. You want to shake it. If you don't hear anything, then it's the kind that has the full fattiness, that has the creaminess. And, because there is coconut cream that if you shake it, you'll hear the water, and it's mostly a watered-down coconut cream. You don't want, you do not want to hear the liquid. You want it to sound like a solid, because that's what's gonna give you all of that really rich, thick cream. And then we're gonna add our pineapple juice. And um, so I thought it needed to be a tad sweeter but instead of using a sweetener, I'm going to use this a little bit sweeter coconut pineapple juice. So, um, and is that in place of the rum, the white rum? Uh, what did I do in place of the rum? Hang on. Let me see what I did. So I combined the rum and the pineapple juice. Just added those together and mm -hmm. you used all pineapple juice for yes. it? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think so then what is that in place of? This is for part of the pineapple juice. Okay. So no, I guess I did. I don't know what I did. Hmm. I think I need to look at this again. Yeah, you've got some splaining to do. Lucy, you've got some splaining to do. Yes, I do. Okay, so two ounces times four is eight. So I'm using eight. Oh, then I've got, um, so no, I do need to add a little more for the, um, so I used half pineapple juice, half coconut pineapple juice for the pineapple juice. So now I need to, I don't think I did anything for the white rum. I think I just left it out. And that's why it's so oh. frozen and thick. Okay, that, that makes, makes more sense. sense. Yes, I'm like, I don't think I did that. Okay, so I just need about a cup of frozen pineapple. Yep. So did y'all get that? So instead, she just left the rum out completely and didn't use it because she wanted a thicker, icier drink. Um, and then in place of the pineapple juice, she did half all pineapple, half pineapple coconut. 
Okay, yeah, all of a sudden I'm like, what did I do here? I just left that out totally. If you want it more drink style, but when I did it, we all liked it. Whoops, I need a little more. I need a little more of that. I think I got some right here. The pineapple habanero? Yeah. Here is your one cup of frozen pineapple chunks. Okay, we probably need this filled because I think I'm gonna need to do another recipe because I don't think that's enough for all of us. Okay, so this is gonna be, we thought this would be nice and refreshing to go along with the brownies. to be getting the icing into yes, the bag. Yes, I can. Oh, I know what. I did put ice in it the other day. It calls for ice, doesn't it? That's what I did that made it frozen. Sarah, would you go get me some ice in here? Or I think I have plenty of pineapple. I could just add more pineapple. Yum. Woo! Sarah, just bring me some more pineapple. <laughs> it's right there. The pineapple's oh, all right mind. there. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I got it. Woo. That's got a kick. Maybe I did. I think I did use. Okay, we're going to use. We're going to use some of the white rum. <laughs> Woo. So we're, we're not going to use white rum. No, we're going to use, yes, yeah, some of this for the white rum. And then in place of the ice, I'm just going to use more pineapple. Okay. That's right. I don't know if she heard me. Ashley, is that going to explode? Uh, nah. You notice I always keep my hand on a blender. Me and blenders don't get along. I know some of you have heard my stories. I've blown them up on TV, and they did not edit it out, and it still plays today. All right. That's going to be our drink. And it's not at all as icy as I did it the other day. So it was like ice cream the other day, so not sure what I did. But we're okay. It's delicious. So now what we're going to do here is we are going to serve it like this with, right there. Well, I had these cute little spoons for you to eat it with, but I don't think you need that. So now we'll just put the cherry in. <laughs> so there you go. Here is their drink, but that didn't work because it sunk down in there. That's okay. So much for that idea. It's okay. It's all right. It'll be it was delicious. icy the other day, remember? And we thought it would be so like ice cream. I know. All right, maybe I better taste it again. Make sure they want it. Oh, it's very delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. Are you sure? Ooh. Yeah. Do you want to grab the brownies? Mm -hmm. Bring them over here? Yeah. <coughs> wow. See why you would not want me to put vodka in that. I would drink it. Oh, it's got a tang. Secret to cutting brownies. A plastic knife. A plastic knife will slide through them. And I probably should not cut this whole pan. They are much better at this than I am. So, what are we going to do? Cut the brownies. Okay. 
does that look right? That one looks pretty good. Yeah. What are you trying to do? How many are you trying one, to get? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Well, I could do that. Y'all want a bigger brownie? Yeah. All right. I got you. Do they want a bigger brownie? <laughs> what a silly question. Just do, do half of oh, that. So you're doing half. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Just that. Yes. All right. Wow, that's going to be a big brownie. That sounds amazing. <laughs> All right, so this I'll do. Do it. There, do there. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. you go. I got it. I got it. You're so good at this. Thank you. All right. So now we need one of our little dessert plates. Man, what in the heck is that? The first brownie is always the hardest to get out. So for me, I think that's the cooked brownie. Oop, there you go. Oh. I, need, I thought you were getting me a plate. Oh, sorry. My bad. That's okay. Mm. Oh, my. So that one. Can you get me another plate? Sure. Woo! Just there so you know, is. the heat's on the back end. <laughs> so good. And these little spatulas are perfect. I have not snipped the uh, tip of the bag yet. There you oh go. Oh, my. Woo! There you go. There you go. And the bowl. And there's your brownie. We could probably put a little more of this on. Well, we have a whole pan to do. Okay. <laughs> That'll be mine. Okay. No, never. I'm just kidding. Whoop. Somebody squeeze this in the middle. Uh, you're the only one that has dispensed it. So it's only all you, my friend. Ooh. All you. I had it perfect at you, you in did. there, too. You did. I'm sorry. I don't know how I did that. I thought I was. Gosh. <laughs> I'm nervous. Oh. oh my goodness gracious. I'm walking away. Okay. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Okay. All right. You ready? Are we done? Yes. Talk I to them. I think we're done. Talk to them. All right. Any questions? You're like, what did exactly you do to that <laughs> drink? I still want to know how I got it so icy and slushy and delicious. I think I must have put ice in it. I think that's what it was. Yeah. So put the ice in there and it'll be slushy and icy and delicious. So anyway, any questions? Yes. 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 And the and the chocolate chips. I don't usually put chocolate chips. So her question is for my basic brownie recipe that's in my red book and it's in my published book, the only thing I did different was add the two tablespoons of water because consistently when I looked up DIY brownie mixes, they all had two tablespoons of water. And that was the only difference in my brownie and, and the mixes that I saw. And then to make it richer, just a half a cup of chocolate chips. And I use the Enjoy Life chocolate chips, so they're gluten-free, dairy-free, so that makes it... Um, nice to have the oil in there yeah all right any other questions yes oh oh yeah all of the above what was the so question the um do i have any of the infused oils that i have used in my bread baking yes the uh, um uh, I have used the Fiesta Spice before in tortilla dough. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites is the blood orange in pumpkin cranberry muffins. Just substitute that for the oil. The lemon oil, the Sicilian lemon that we used in the salad dressing, which, how did y'all like the salad dressing? And you saw how easy it was, okay? And um, so that one's one that I love. 
in my bread dough itself, I've used the caramelized garlic. I've used the, um, the how do you say the pizza? The pizza olio. Pizza olio in a focaccia type bread. I've used that um, one in my pizza crust also before. Yes. So, yes, yes. Just um, And if you also, if you feel like, for instance, the, the muffin recipe, our basic muffin recipe is a half a cup of oil and a half a cup of honey. Okay, a half a cup is a lot of infused oil. So split it in half and do a quarter of a cup with the infused oil and a quarter of a cup with your regular olive oil. You will still get that intense flavor without having to use the oh. entire half cup of yeah. infused oil. It's, it's amazingly flavorful. Like the lemon, like I make a lemon poppy seed muffin with my basic uh, muffin recipe. So like she said, I don't want to use a full half a cup of the Sicilian oil. So I just use a quarter cup, then a little bit of lemon extract, soft white wheat so that the flavor is not masked by the flavor of the red wheat. But that one's good. Something else. Oh, um, the nasty um, cinnamon rolls that are the orange Danish, you know, the canned biscuits. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, un the canned orange cinnamon rolls. Uh, the unhealthy. There you yes. go. Yeah. Fake yeah. rolls. Fake yes. Rolls. Yes. The orange oil in your bread dough and then even basting your, um, instead of butter, use that orange oil there and that mm -hmm. will give you the flavor. Yeah. Or even in the, the cream cheese frosting for your cinnamon rolls, you can use a little bit of the oil. Of the oil. Um, one thing we didn't talk about. Uh, that you can use the the oils and the vinegars actually summertime is coming ice cream drizzling ice cream with either the oil or the vinegar is absolutely delicious there is a chocolate espresso vin balsamic vinegar on vanilla ice cream is so so good um, well and so in the last class we did a raspberry ice cream which we just did cream frozen raspberries mm -hmm. with some vanilla and then your um, hunt, uh, agave nectar and it we blend it blend it and it comes out like ice cream you scoop it and that chocolate espresso balsamic it, it added yep. the it just brought the flavor out it, instead of it just kind of being good it was just sweet and a little bland it the the tartness of the vinegar, vinegar. but then the chocolate it yeah and we so have good. one customer that says she eats it on her waffles, the chocolate yeah. espresso. Absolutely. Cottage cheese and yogurt using the vinegars in, in place of any yeah. type of sweetener. Um, I actually do just plain yogurt with fresh fruit, and I drizzle the tangerine balsamic vinegar over it, mm -hmm. add a little scoop of granola on top. Um, oh, that's another one. Um, granola, our just standard granola recipe in the cookbook uses melted butter and honey. Use, in place of some of the butter, use one of the infused oils yeah. like the lemon or the blood orange oil, and it gives your entire batch of granola that flavor, and it is so good. So, so good. And another thing you can do, you know, um, buttermilk. You, I use a lot of buttermilk in recipes, my muffin and pancake, anytime you have baking soda in there. If you don't have buttermilk on hand, the general rule of thumb is use a, a tablespoon of vinegar or some type of acid to regular sweet milk to make it buttermilk. It's a tablespoon for every cup. You could use the raspberry vinegar. balsamic. Mm -hmm. um, you could use the, the lemon balsamic. You know, you could use one of these balsamics and it would just give a little hint. I'm telling you, Get some, have them on hand, and just start using them. Don't, because I, I went to stores, you know, over the years before we started carrying them, and I'd buy some, and I didn't use it, and I'd, you know, just forget about it. Just start using them. Just start putting them in the bread dough, putting them in the muffin. Uh, even if it's um, frying your pancakes in the vanilla maple oil or the sweet cream butter. So good. So good. So. And they have tons of different flavor profiles. So if you really like more of that Asian-themed uh, flavor profile, they have a great sesame oil. They have a black garlic tamari soy v vinegar that I now use in place of soy sauce oh, in any recipe. Finishing fried rice with some of that balsamic vinegar, the soy uh, balsamic vinegar is absolutely amazing. 
Um, so yeah, just frying eggs, sauteing, you know, your onions and yeah. your mushrooms and all of that, just the sky's the limit on all of the flavors. So all right, what's it? the verdict on the brownies? Oh my goodness. So good. Yeah. Did, did you, you have a and you have a question, so don't let me forget. Okay. You like brownies the brownies are good? The, what was so, your question? You you need to have another one just to make sure? It's understandable. Okay. Oh, all a right. Moorish taste. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. A Moorish taste. Okay, okay. A Moorish taste. So Need what's some your more. What's your question, honey? Yes, the salad dressing uh, reminder. It it's not up here. It it's, was Sicilian lemon oil and r the vine ripened raspberry vinaigrette, mm -hmm. and then uh, a little bit of the vanilla bean sea salt. But again, like Ashley said in the beginning, if you've forgotten because of all this deliciousness, um, we can uh, sample some and we've got the little cups out there. We can put a little oil and a little vinegar and you can taste that and see, yep. ooh, that's what I had to do the other day. We could not decide which dressing we wanted to do because there's so many. One of my favorites is the blood orange and the blueberry vinaigrette. It is delicious. Yep. So these are things we can, we'll be happy to now yep. kind of, if y'all want to... Another really good one for like a grilled chicken uh, salad for the summertime. Um, I discovered this combination last summer is the Sicilian lemon oil and the roasted garlic vinegar. It gives the brightness of the lemon, but the, the savoriness of the, of the garlic. And it's a delicious combination just on a simple bed of salad greens with sliced grilled chicken. It's just amazing. So These oils, vinegar, spices, rubs, salts, will bring anything you already mm -hmm. make, take your family favorite and just go, woo, I bet this would be good in there. Yep. So um, it, it just really brings up the whole flavor profile to a whole new level. And um, I think the soup class that we did, I took soup recipes and then just started incorporating the Olivelli oils and vinegars and seasonings. And somebody said, I didn't know this was an Olivelli class. And I felt terrible afterwards, but it makes everything taste so much better. Yeah. So, because it just really brings up the flavor. So, I hope you enjoyed the class today. And uh, we just pray that you have a blessed weekend, the rest of your week and weekend, and that you will come back again. And remember, sign up for our email newsletter yep. if you don't get it already. And we will move out to the store to help you with your choices if you would like. So, yep. thank you for coming today.